You know, uh, we've talked a lot in the last number of days about how the last four or five DC movies have not just struggled at the box office, but hard faceplant flopped. Um, the one that came closest to breaking even, I think, was probably Black Adam. That didn't even make $400 million. Of course, Shazam couldn't even make, Shazam 2 couldn't even make $150 million. Birds of Prey made $200 million worldwide, so on and so forth. And now we just have The Flash, a great movie in my opinion, but <coughs> really come out of the gate badly. UK audiences are really liking it, so that's... Yay for That's them. That's 20 bucks. That's nice. I mean, North American <laughs> audiences are loving it. I mean, it's got like a high 80% yeah. audience mm -hmm. rating with North American Eye, but ain't nobody going to go see it. It only made $55 million opening weekend. Say, that little drop in the, the box office bucket from the UK wasn't great. But yeah, it, it's no, doing it wasn't well like there. I feel like million it dollars deserves credit. Maybe. But it's Lion's Blood drop. It's Lion's Blood dropping in oh, no. to the box office for no, DC Sex. Um, so here's, here's the, the question, though. Is the answer... To DC's box office woes, simply dropping the budgets significantly of their movies. And that is the topic of today's Mint Mobile hotline question of the day. Listen, if you guys have a topic or question you'd like to hear on our podcast or see us make a video about on our YouTube channel, and you'd like to hear the dulcet tones of your own voice, go ahead and call our Mint Mobile hotline anytime 24-7 at 951-268-4259. And once again, today's topic is just about Hey, maybe DC just needs to drop their budgets. Check it out. John, Phil Lynch calling. Saw the flash. Loved it. It flopped. Sucks. It is what it is. Look, I mean, I see no solution for DC besides lowering these budgets. I mean, they have to lower budgets. They're not on Marvel's level of billion-dollar box office time and time again at the box office. They never really have that. They need to lower these the budgets for these. Look, we... What do you think? I mean, they need to leave themselves open to profitability because if we keep going like the flash and Black Adam is somebody that loves the DC IP more than just the movies, I'm concerned that we might not be seeing as many DC movies down the line if they keep with this trend. What do you think? Thanks. All right, Phil. Thank you so much for that succinct, <laughs> to the point message. Loved it. The greatest message. I love that received. one. He's a straight shooter. It's straight yeah. shooter. I like Phil. Loved it. Flopped. Sucks. Sucks. Whatever. I love that. That was yeah. great. Was like, boom. No wasted words. Okay, so. It raises an interesting question, though, about, look, I I've been on my soapbox for years that Hollywood in general needs to reel in the spending on a lot of these movies. Their spending has just gotten way out of control on a lot. Fast 10 costs $340 million to make. Really? I mean, that's just utterly preposterous. Well, you got family. And you got yeah, you got, family. you got family and then cars for the Duct family. Tape. So... <laughs> Here's the thing. I, I, I believe for a long time they need to cut the budgets on these. But is the answer to DC's financial woes simply a matter of cutting their budgets? I mean, yes, if Black Adam had cost only $100 million to make, Black Adam would have been profitable. But can you make Black Adam for $100 million? Well, that, that I'm not really sure. And is that the pathway forward is that the path to success for dc moving forward as we're getting ready to head into 2025 with the dc reboot is that the option just slash budgets i'm going to propose the answer to that is no that's not the answer for two reasons reason number one it's basically saying you give up right if you're dc you have to believe that you have the ip and the history and the, the generational fandom and the stories and the belief that this property can be every bit as big, if not bi bigger and more successful, or at the very minimum as successful as the Marvel properties have been. You have Batman, you have Superman, you have Wonder Woman, you have The Flash. I mean, you, you have all these incredible iconic characters and you've got to believe that these properties can be every bit as relevant, as big, and as successful as your counterparts up the street at Marvel. You have to believe that. Because if you don't, why are you making the movies in the first place? If you don't believe that you're on that level, just don't make the movies. Just don't make them. I'd rather you do what David Zaslav did with Batgirl. Just pull the plug on it. Don't put them out. You don't believe in Blue Beetle? Pull the plug. 
You don't believe in what you're doing. The answer is not slashing because if you just start slashing your budgets, what you're ultimately doing is, well, first of all, I do agree they should rein in their budgets a little bit. Yes. But don't just go, well, we're going to make superhero movies for $75 million or we're going to make superhero movies for $100 million. We're going to make big blockbuster entertainment. And I'm sorry, but today you can't do that. So you've got to have a core belief that you can. However, and this goes back to a, something we talked about earlier today on our YouTube channel, you do have to acknowledge that what you're doing right now isn't working. We did this video earlier today, actually, where we put up the top 10 list. Chris, you would like this. We put up a top 10 list. Actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it up here right now just so you can see it. Okay. Um, that's the wrong one. This is the one I wanted to bring up. So the top 10 MCU movies box office versus the top 10 box office DCEU movies. I want you to notice something. Let's compare the number 10 MCU movie and the number 10 DCU movie. The number 10 Marvel movie is Captain Marvel that made $1.1 billion. The number 10 DC movie is Suicide Squad that made $168 million. There is only one film on DC's top 10, and that's Aquaman at number one that made $1.14 billion that would even make it onto the MCU's top 10 list, and it would be in number nine. And the bottom five, the bottom five MCU films of all time, including like The Incredible Hulk and stuff like that, bottom five MCU box office films of all time would all make it onto the DCU's top 10. That's, I, I, I mean, if that isn't screaming at you that what you've been doing has not worked, uh, nothing else will convince you. So what if you're now James Gunn and you're heading in to 2025, you're restarting this DCEU, you're starting from scratch, and or for the most part from scratch, with Superman Legacy, is the answer to slash the budget on it. I say no. Because if you're going to do that, just shut the doors. Just close it down. I say you go big. Go with a two, not a $340 million movie like Fast X, but go with a big $200 million Fabulous Superman movie. And I said this yesterday. I'll say it again. And understand you're going to lose money on the first one. What? Yeah. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, two years before this movie ever comes out, the first Superman movie, the first movie of the DCU is probably going to lose money. And that's okay. You want to know why it's going to lose money? Because DC's reputation is shit. <laughs> It's garbage. <laughs> they just put out this Flash movie with Michael Keaton returning that everybody got excited about. It made $55 million opening weekend. They put out a pretty decent Shazam 2 movie. Couldn't even make $150 million. You put out a Black Adam movie with the biggest movie star in the world that they built up for 15 years. Couldn't even make $400 million. You put out Birds of Prey with Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn. Barely was able to crack $200 million. Nobody wants to go see DC movies anymore. And that's not going to be fixed overnight with just one movie. What one movie can do, though, is start the road to recovery. They get, they're going to have to lay the foundation with the first one or two movies just to show the world again, hey, DC is back. This is a whole new game. We've got, in sports terms, we've got a totally different team. And we are about winning now. And yeah, the first movie is going to lose money. And they should prepare for that and understand that and be okay with it. And then the second movie might also lose a little bit of money. But guess what? Winning mm -hmm. cures everything. You put out a great Superman movie and then you follow it up with another great movie, you will be on the road to success. Look, when Disney launched Disney+, Plus, they understood and they said it publicly that it was going to take them, I think, five years? They might have said, I, I might be off on the number of years. I think it was five years before they were going to be able to make break even on it. They understood when we get this thing rolling, it's going to cost us money. We're going to lose money. But the idea is we do a good enough job. We win over the consumers and we're going to get to a place of profitability. It took Netflix streaming over a decade to get to that point. And that's the place that James Gunn and DCU find themselves in now. The answer is not to slash your budgets. You've got to come out in 2025 with Superman Legacy swinging for the fences. 
you got to come out, balls to the wall, everything you got, leave nothing on the field, every sports cliche I can come up with, that's what you've got to come out with. Leave it all there. Blood, sweat, tears, and your budget. $200 million. Go. And understand that what you're doing with that first movie is laying a foundation. And then you go from there. So no, I do not believe the answer is to reduce budgets. Rain them in, be more reasonable, yes, but slashing budgets, because if all you're doing that is say, well, then we, we got to make this movie for $3,000 in order to break even. Well, then don't make the movie. Chris, you heard the question. Yeah. Um, spending is out of control. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is there something to be said here for making DC's future approach saying, we got to make these movies for $100 million. We got to make these movies for $120 million. I don't know. How do you approach this? I definitely think you need to be mindful of the budget and reel it in. I mean, Jonathan, you brought this up earlier this week about how James Gunn typically is under budget. And I think one of his greatest assets, aside from him being an incredibly creative mind, is that he has a trauma background. You know, yeah. he worked for Lloyd Kaufman on these shoestring budgets, creating really, really interesting, wild, gross films. And I think that kind of mindset has stuck with him of I can do a lot with a little. And you see it in his work still of being able to do practical effects well, of utilizing comedy well, of utilizing just single shots really well to <laughs> further his storytelling. He does a lot of what incredible graphic novelists do, where you have just an exterior shot right a lone cabin in the snow with somebody standing outside with a like a blood puddle next to him you know everything from one shot and you only had to do one panel then that way right he thinks in that kind of way and i think that's a great asset to him and i think with him on the creative side of things doing things i think that he'd be able to help encourage that kind of mindfulness with budgets now if it does come down to i want everyone to start making fifty thousand dollar movies that's problematic the big thing is that you want quality over quantity And this, for some reason, is something that every now and then people fight me about (laughs) of, no, 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 we want both. I'm sure you do, but usually one has to give, right? Mm -hmm. I would love it if I was getting incredible, wonderful comic book movies every (laughs) single month for the rest of my life. I'd be such a happy camper. But that's not particularly reasonable because it takes a while to make movies. You have to pay people what they're worth. Special effects don't just come out of nowhere. You got to have a team that builds them. So I think they need to also really look at what they're doing. I think it's very ambitious to have this huge tied in universe to comics, to video games, to TV, to film. But I think they need to be very mindful moving forward as to who the major players are in all of that. Because while I'm really excited to see some B-list folks in there, some B-side kind of comics that a lot of people don't know about, you do need to introduce your heavy hitters and you just need to be mindful about the stories you're going to tell and tell them effectively. That's the bigger focus is the storytelling. Ray, let me, let me ask you. You have you just saw Flash again. Mm-hmm. You, to you, it's your favorite DCU movie. Yep. What do you think, if I were to put you on the spot, like I'm doing right now. <laughs> oh, yeah, say, the best decision maker here? Okay, <laughs> let's say, go. Well, if, if James Gunn were to give you a call right now and say, Ray, what bit of <coughs> advice can you give me about what we need to do to right the DC ship? Like, we just looked at those charts, right? About mm-hmm. how, like, the DCU has from its inception underperformed. Going into a clean slate reboot, what would you tell James is some stuff he's got to focus on? I, I hate to say it, but I've said it before. I think the Superman movie is more important than we all, like, for me at least. Then um, a lot of, you know, there's a lot riding on the Superman. Absolutely. Movie. Yeah. I mean, you talk about foundation. If the foundation is poo poo, the house is going to fall apart. Oh, yeah. They're dead. Look what look what happened to the the dark universe, the monster universe that Universal is going to do. Right. They're like they had all these plans. Johnny Depp's going to be invisible. Man, Javier Bardem is going to be, I don't know, Wolfman, whatever it is. We got John. And then they came out of the gate with the mummy and it crapped the bed. And the whole thing died before it even started. So you're right about that, but the importance of the foundational movie. And for me personally, if he can make me care about a character, I don't really, it's not really one of my favorites. Like Superman has never been one of my favorites. Henry Cavill made the character. uh, Alive for you. Yeah, yeah. Or like made me notice this superhero. Right. I was always a spider spider (laughs) guy. But if he can make me care about this character, then it should be smooth sailing from there like with everyone else because batman's cool to me wonder woman um yeah if he could start off with a bang it would it would be very good for the dc universe i think but i mean the other thing you mentioned too i mean 
And who cares about the budget on Superman? You go go all in. Go big. Go big. But, because if but you're right like with with Sup there is so much riding on this movie. Because uh, again, I I don't want to say it's an apples and apples comparisons, but again, we look at that dark universe. You they came out on the wrong foot and it killed all their plans. Also, going back a few more years, remember the Aragon Dragon movie, the the book <laughs> yeah, series? Yeah, yeah. I actually like that movie. They were they had series. plans, they had signed contracts, they were going to make a trilogy of films and they came out of the gate and made a real shitty first movie and all of a sudden that died and it was gone. And I'm not saying the DCU dies and disappears if Superman Legacy doesn't come out, but I'll tell you what. Remember I said if they lay a good foundation within two movies, they can get right on the very path. If they come out of the gate with a bad Superman Legacy movie, it may take them Four or five years to get the audience back on board. Uh, did, did you ever? You say, can't start week. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you ever tell us what, how you felt about a younger Superman? Because that might be it, right? We're getting a young. Maybe I'm, a younger I'm totally great with a younger okay. Superman. Yeah, I, I have no problem. I mean, well, I don't want Superboy. I don't want Smallville the movie. But they were saying it's going to be a Clark Kent who's already working at the Daily Planet in the earlier years of his of his hero career. I'm totally good with that. You know, get in a Superman that can be Superman for the next 15, 20 yep. years. Who can be the next Hugh Jackman um, mm. sort of character, right? I, I'm all for it it's if they can make it work. But I'm telling you, the pressure on James Gunn to yep. knock this out of the park is absolutely there.